liveth and was dead and behold I am alive forevermore amen and have the keys of hell and of death I am he that liveth and was dead I am he that liveth and was dead I am he that liveth and was dead And behold I am alive forevermore Amen And have the keys of hell and of death I am he that liveth and was dead I am he that liveth and was dead I am he that liveth and was dead And have the keys of hell and of death. I am he that liveth and was dead. I am he that liveth and was dead. I am he that liveth and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And have the keys of hell and of death. I am he that liveth and was dead. I am he that liveth and was dead. He is alive. He is alive. He is alive. I am he that liveth and was dead. He is alive. He is alive. Amen. He is alive. I am he that liveth and was dead. I am he that liveth and was dead. I am he that liveth and was dead and behold i am alive forevermore amen and have the keys of hell and of death i am he that liveth and was dead i am he that liveth and was dead
help me out here now. Hallelujah. Praise is what I do when I want to get close to you. I'm learning my hands in praise. Praise is who I am. I'm a praise him while I can. My blade don't weigh the band. And I'll vow to praise you through the good and the bad. I'll praise you whether happy or sad. I'll praise you in all that I go through because praise is what I do. And I Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, on today. I was sitting over there contemplating on should I say and sing anything or not, and that and that uh, song came into my to my heart and to my spirit, and it kind of goes along with what I had to say today. But uh, I thank God for all the songs that we sung today, Brother Ricky. Got a little excited up here today. I just let them go today because I know we missed last week. So, so get it out of the system. But amen. I thank God for the prayers and the worship at all times. So I thank God for um, everything. Despite what it may seem like, God has still got us. Amen? Amen. amen. So I want to encourage you on today. Uh, forgive me too. I forgot my jacket at home because uh, I put on my overcoat. So that's why I'm a little underdressed. Feel funny too, but just for work pray for me in that situation also i just want to address the church um i was trying to think about what i was going to say today this was actually last week you know what i wanted to say to the church and then i i uh consulted with god and he wanted me to let the saints know he said to tell you some of your your hearts are heavy your hearts are heavy right now amen but God said, don't worry about it. God said, don't let your heart be heavy on today. Amen. So I want us to get that in our spirit that we just let whatever is holding us back, whatever is weighing us down to let it go. Amen. And that's the message that personally that I had got that I received from the Lord. I was like, what? What is it? And he said, my 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 people's their hearts are heavy right now. But tell them it's OK. I, I, I see their situation. Amen. And I know that there's some deliverance in there. So that's why that song came to me, too, is a, through the good and the bad we can praise the Lord amen amen so if you return with me um, there's three books three books I'm gonna use today uh, John chapter 5 John chapter 11 and Genesis chapter 18 and then so in John chapter chapter number 5 Verses, verse number two, and then verse five through nine. So that's John chapter number five, verse number two, and then jump down to verse five through nine. It says, now there is, in, is at Jerusalem by the sheep market a pool, which is called in the Hebrew tongue Bethesda, having five porches. Now verse five, and a certain man was there which had an infirmity 30 and eight years. When Jesus saw him lie and knew that he had been now a long time, in that case, he said unto him, Wilt thou be made whole? The, imp the impotent man answered him, Sir, I have no man when the water is troubled to put me into the pool, but while I am coming, another step down before me. Jesus said unto him, Rise, take up thy bed and walk. And immediately the man was made whole and took up his bed and walked. And on the same day was the Sabbath. Now if you could turn to chapter 11 in the, in the book of John. Start at verse 38, and we're going to go right through to verse 44. 
and it reads as follows. Jesus, therefore, again, groaning in himself, cometh to the grave. It was a cave, and a stone lay upon it. Jesus said, Take ye away the stone. Martha, the sister of him that was dead, said unto him, Lord, by this time he stinketh, for he hath been dead four days. Jesus said unto her, Said I not unto thee, that if thou wouldest believe, thou shouldest see the glory of God. Yes. I want to read that again. Yes. Said I not unto thee, that if thou wouldst believe, yes. thou shouldst see the glory of God. Yes. Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid, and Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me, and I knew that thou hearing me always, but because of the people which stand by, stand by, I said it, that they may believe that thou hast sent me. And when he had thus had spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And he that was dead came forth, bound hand and foot with the grave cloths, and his face was bound about with a napkin. Jesus said unto him, Loose him and let him go. Hallelujah. And into the book of Genesis, chapter number 18. And this is where my uh, this is where my subject is going to come from. We're going to read verse verse number 14, just the first part, and this is also my subject. In Genesis chapter 14, ver chapter 18 and verse 14 says, is anything too hard for the Lord? All right. mm. okay. Is anything too hard for the Lord? All right. You may be seated. Amen. And I put that in there and I read those scriptures ahead of time because I want you to, I want you to think about whatever it is you're facing. Whatever you're into right now that's weighing you down because yes. the Lord said your heart doesn't have to be heavy yes. and I want you to look at it and I want you to say and ask yourself is anything too hard for the Lord amen it is important to know what God has given you He's given us peace in the middle of our situation, in the midst of our situation. And in that peace, he can get the glory. Amen. We see back at, in the, at the um, porch of Bethesda, we see back there. It's in the beginning of this, um, in the beginning of this chapter it says, and this there was a feast of Jews. Um, and Jesus went up unto Jerusalem. And then verse 3 it says, And these lay a great multitude of impotent folk, of blind halt, whither waiting for the moving of the water. But yet, Christ saw the impotent man that was laying on the bed out of the great multitude of people that was there. I bring that up because I want you to look at yourself. It's important to know that God chose you. Out of all the people, God chose you. And you would, we think about that and we say, well, Lord, why me? Because he seen something in you that made you stand out from the other people. This man laying on this mattress, I'm assuming it was a mattress, you know, and Jesus zeroed in on him and went to him and said, would thou be healed? And the man said, I want to be healed more than anything else. So let's put ourselves in that position. And God says, do you want to be saved? And you say, yes, I want to be saved, but this, that, and the third is holding me back. Christ said, not no more. I loose anything that is bind, binding you, that's holding you back, so that you may stand upright and see the glory that I can do. And there was a reason he did it amongst the people. There was a reason he let Lazarus die before he raised him up. Because he specializes what? In the impossible. So the situation that we face in, don't worry about it. God says, lift your burden off for yourself. Don't weigh yourself down with it. He wants to be our hero, amen? Yes. You know, we see we see the fictional heroes on TV and all of that stuff, but we got a true and living hero that's with 
with us every single day. So whatever it is we're up against, we can call on that hero to go before us. Deliver me out of this situation. This is what I need from you. I need to have a touch from you. When I said in my prayer today, I asked the Lord to stop by and drop off your spirit. And look what happened. He stopped by and he dropped off his spirit. So don't let your current situation be your final destination. Amen. You don't have to stay where you are is what I'm trying to tell you. The flesh wants our hearts to be heavy. The devil wants us to be discouraged. The devil wants us to hold our head down in shame so he can come and say, see, where's your God now? Where's your God when you really need him? But we don't have anything to worry about. I heard Brother Al say today, let not your heart be troubled. Don't worry about whatever situation you're facing. Don't worry about how it looks. Deliverance is at hand. Amen. When things come up against us, just go a little deeper with Christ. Go get a little higher in the word of God. Amen. And he will all we're going to always be under attack. Remember that the devil is on his job 24 seven. So how do we get on ours by we turning it over to Jesus? We start, we fast and we pray and we understand that, look, Lord, I can't do this without you. I need a touch from you. I need a deliverance today, Lord God. So he looked at the impotent man and he said, don't worry about the water. It ain't all in the water. Yes, I set that up, but it ain't. I'm here now. So pick up your bed and walk. Shake off whatever's holding you back. Don't give it the, the power that it needs. It's, it's pulling the power away from you. You can look at your situation and say not today you will not get the glory from me you can say I'm giving this over to Jesus we all are facing some things individually and collectively we're facing some things but if we re rely on Christ and we listen and obey his word he will deliver us out let him be your hero let him be the one to save you don't look to man man don't have every answer that's why I couldn't call anyone and say what to say to the people I went to God and I said, God, what do you want your people to know? He said, although your heart is heavy on today, lay it down because I'm here. Kick that bed of affliction to the side and come forth. Hallelujah. Lazarus, come forth. Saints, if you're struggling, come forth unto Christ. I'm standing here. You know how when you set your child up, when you're trying to teach them how to walk, you put them in one spot and you step back and you want them to come to you. That's what God, God has his hand hands up saying come to me right now I'm here I'm waiting for you don't worry about what's in front of you you come to me and I can deliver you out Amen. when Christ delivers us out of things he changes men's heart when Christ listen to me when Christ delivers you out of things he changes the hearts of men he lets his deliverance be a blessing to someone else by you going forth and telling Christ Christ, telling people what Christ has done for you. It's no need for us to be hopeless. It's no need for us to be downtrodden. We've been given the greatest gift that anyone could ever give. You know, again, let not your heart be troubled. Don't worry about this. This worry, this stuff and this worrying down here is for naught. Because the tests and trials today have no comparison to the glory that God is going to reward that God is going to give unto you. Amen. So we must stand firm in the word of God in this confidence that we have. That's why he gives us these scriptures and when he, that's why he did the things that he did. So man can say, no man could do this. No man could do this. But by the spirit of the Lord, amen. But by him speaking out. Christ said, it. I just pray to you. Thank you, Lord, because you hear, so you heard me. I did that so that the people could see what it is they need to do. We ask God to go before us. We we ask God to come with us and we ask God to prepare the way before us so that way we don't have anything to worry about and then what happens is you can hold your head up high in confidence you can stand tall when you face adversity and you can say not today devil you get no win here you get no glory from me today I'm thanking and I'm praising my God right now because he's picked me up off this bed of affliction he saved me from death and destruction not to just leave me here but to go forth with me and to walk upright always 
the devil wants our hearts to be heavy. He wants us to be grievous. But God wants us to rejoice even in the storm. Amen. When we face in that storm, when they when they went down and said, said, Lord, how can you sleep? And we're about to be, we're about to drown in this storm. Christ said, Oh, ye of little faith. Peace be still unto these raging waters. Amen. They looked in astonishment. So why can't we say, not today, devil, and have layman look back and say, what is this thing that you're carrying around? What is this thing that you have? We want to be the example to those that are lost. We want to show them that our confidence is not in the things of this earth. Our confidence is in the Lord above. Our confidence is in that unseen spirit that no one else can see. I heard something today that whoa, it moved me. I was in the back. I was talking to Elder Jones and Elder Jones said something unbelievable. It blew my mind. He said, faith is not faith if it isn't tested. All right now. I want you to think about that. Your faith in God can't be your faith in God if you haven't been tested. Because in your tests and your trials, you say, I can't do this. Man can't do this. But I got a God that I'm serving that will deliver me out of every situation. It's not, it's not, there's no uh, manual for it. You have to dig your heels in and say, Lord, this is all on you. That's why the Hebrew boys told Nebuchadnezzar, O king, we are not careful of how we respond to you, how we answer you. O king, you can do whatever it is you want to us, but I'm going to jump in this fire and the Lord is going to deliver me out in the time of my need. And when that, that faith and that confidence that they had in the word of God, when he looked in there, he said, I thought we threw three in the fire. Look how it changed his mind. Look how it changed his heart. He said, but I see four in the fire. And what? One of them looks like the son of God. So no, when you standing and you seem like you're alone, the one that's standing next to you is the son of God, you know, and let men see this is who I'm walking with. This is where I'm going to stand. That's why he told Peter upon this rock, not the rock over here that man can dig out of the quarry, but upon this rock is where I'll build my church. Because with that, you can take this church anywhere. You can do anything with this spirit that I'm going to put into you. This church can be on Brooks Avenue or this church can be right here because it's the word of God. It's the confidence that we have in Jesus. The Lord is here to deliver us out of everything. So drop the heaviness today. I want you to shake it off and forget about it. I want you to say not today. I'm going to leave it right here with the Lord on today because God said he will deliver me out. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, I thank you for everything that you've already done. You can deliver us out of every situation, Lord. We have confidence that you will move in this house. Thank you, Jesus. Take a stand today. Let your life glorify God. Let your life show men how I'm going to walk. Despite what this world throws at us, let your life say, but God will get me out of every situation. I want you to shake it off today, saints. I want you to forget about it. Leave the heavy right here. God will do the heavy lifting. God will do the deliverance. Use the confidence that we have in Jesus. Use the faith that he's bestowed upon us. He hasn't stopped delivering. He hasn't forgot where you are. He hasn't forgot who, who is his. Amen. Hallelujah. We thank you right now. Right. Remember, God will always take care of his own. Hallelujah. That wayward child of yours, you walking right with Christ, he got him. That spouse that ain't ready to commit yet, you walking right with Christ, he got them. The, the fracture within your family, you walking right with Christ, he'll fix it. He'll make sure that it's right. Romans 8.31 says what? If God be for us, who? Not only who, but what? Not only who, but what? can be against us. There ain't nothing in this world that can stand and defeat us because Christ is with us. I chose you. I set you up so that you, that I'll deliver you, not to leave you alone, not to leave you forsaken. 
We got to stop being weak. We got to stop getting depressed. We got to stop being down. When it comes to us, we got to pray a little more. When it sets down on top of us, we got to fast a little more. Why? Because God is watching us and God says, you're not, I'm not, I'm not going to let them get broken, but I just want to make sure that they still with me and know that I understand what they're facing. I want to make sure that they can still handle the things that come this way. And then watch when I deliver them out, it's like it never happened. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. So we can't be afraid to tell these false doctrines to get back because we have the true and living God right in front of us. I have the true and living God right inside of me. So it doesn't matter what this world can throw at me because God has already told I'm going to do the heavy lifting. My yoke is easy and my burden is light. You got nothing to worry about. We have nothing to fear. They sung this song today, the Lord is my light salvation. Whom shall I fear? Think, think about that. Whom shall I fear? Nothing. We can stand tall just like the Hebrew boys. I love that story so much because you got to think about if the men that lit the fire, they burned up when they got close to it. But the Hebrew boys, they got inside of that fire and the Lord was right there with them walking around. How many would love to commune with God like that? Just walking around having a conversation with Jesus having a God Lord what where is we here and the Lord can just stand back and say because them fools out there think that they can defeat me the devil has them confused that they are better than me but I'm here to let them know and I'm here to show them that when you walking with me there ain't nothing that can stop it hallelujah thank you Jesus rejoice in the things that we going through because the promises of heaven are so much greater than anything that that would this world can throw at us so you have to be mindful of those things that's the beauty of the word of God when you come up against something you can call up the scriptures and the scriptures will show you peace you know David wrote a lot of psalms and it sounded like there was a lot of pain in his, in his writings but he understood while I'm on the run as long as I stay connected with Christ even though it looks like it ain't it's bleak I know I just keep writing these songs I just keep saying Lord you're the deliverer put my enemy under my feet and in the 23rd Psalms he says what you left you would have me to lie down behind still waters because I found my peace in you thank you Jesus I want you to remember this God specializes in the impossible when no one else can God can when no one else will God will so we don't have anything to hold our heads down for saying and I wanted y'all to know that the Lord said get rid of the heavy there's no that your hearts don't need to be heavy I see what's going on you think I didn't set this up so when you come out on the other side it's going to be so much greater you're going to be able to rejoice you're going to be able to say look at God and look what he has already done for us hallelujah Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. So we make this decision right now to let God have his way. Let God do the things that he has already promised us. You know, we make a mess when we try to fix things. Stand still sometimes and say, Lord, you handle it. Lord, you fix this situation. Because the more we kick against it and we fight against it, the worse it gets. But if we just say, I'm going to be hands off and I'm going to watch Lord, watch the Lord deliver. That's why the man was there 30 and 8 years. That's a long time in layman's term but after 30 and 8 years the Lord just came through and said pick up your bed and walk your bed of affliction can't hold you down anymore the thing that was holding you back you no longer have to worry about it the only thing that I asked of you is in verse 14 he said behold thou art made whole sin no more let a worse unless a worse thing come upon you so I brought you out you don't need to go back to this to this bed to the thing that's holding you back everything that's not good in your life is holding you back if you hold on to it we got to shake it off we got to shake it off and move on amen we have to remember the word of God God didn't just leave his word because he had nothing else to do he left his word so we'd have something to lean on who can you call at 3 30 in the morning that's gonna listen who can you call and need an answer from at 
four o'clock in the morning that'll have an answer for you who can you call and just or let you lay down in peace and rise again in peace that's why I always ask the Lord go before me in everything that I do that's why every Sunday when I pray in here I said Lord drop your spirit off so that we be able to commune with you amen we thank you for everything it's important to know this God chose you you're his now you want of his so I'm not gonna let anything happen to you so if you're discouraged in your heart there's no reason to be you know if you if you're burden laden there's no reason to be because I'm here to do the heavy lifting for you hallelujah God has been good to us y'all God has really opened up a way for us we may be small in numbers but we big we can be big in praise you know we've had setbacks but we still standing hallelujah we've had we've had diverse uh, you know adverse situations come up but we still here the Lord wakes you up every day and gives you another opportunity I'm keeping you here for a reason I need to use you and I want men to see how I'm blessing you and so I want you to go out when God delivers us what is he giving us he's given us a testimony so that we can go out and tell men about this great salvation about the things that's waiting for us. elder William said today those mansions in my father's house I can't wait to get mine he said I'm down here worrying about these little pennies and I got a mansion waiting on me so we don't need to worry about the things that we're facing right now this is what I want this is what God wanted me to let you know don't worry about what it looks like praise now because the results are greater than the, the situation amen let me deliver you out I'll show you how to get delivered out but now remember in, in this in this book too he told him go and sin no more so we once he delivers us we can't be tiptoeing swaying we gotta choose and stay you know we have to make it up there's none of this there's none of this well I can do this this day and do no God wants you one way he said because less a worse thing come upon thee and we don't want that and then when we get down it's like, oh lord why am i going through this check yourself watch yourself you know i'm gonna be i'm right here with you but i won't fight you for my glory Amen. you decide to give it to me just like i chose you you have to surrender yourself unto me and then watch me work i'm gonna put you in places that you that i may get the glory but he will always deliver us so that's why the devil comes at us through our family members through these jobs and it's sad to say he's coming through us even through the church you got men standing up there telling us we don't have to walk upright in Christ to be saved you got people up there with these false doctrines telling us it don't take all that it takes everything that God put in this Bible to make it in it takes everything that God has laid out for us because he's showing us the way how are we gonna rewrite the directions that he's already laid out for us you don't know where it's gonna lead you he promised you everlasting life but then you got men telling you you don't have to you don't have to do all of this and you don't have to do all of that you don't have to yes you do you have to be repentant and open to receive the word of God he's not gonna dwell in an unclean house thank you Jesus so we must be mindful of how we carry ourselves out of the multitudes he chose this one out of the multitudes he chose you hold your head up yes. your situation that you're facing go back to Genesis is there nothing impossible for the Lord find your peace in that we can find our peace in the scriptures amen we can find our peace in the things that God has already laid he, he warned he forewarned us you're gonna go through some things but I'm gonna be right there with you every hurdle that you face I'm gonna give you the power to, to get over it we don't have to worry about it. some gonna be higher than others but everyone that you face I'm gonna give you the power to get over it so walk upright in Jesus hold your head up high take a stand that I will not give in to my current situation take a stand that I am not gonna let the devil win take a stand and say Satan get thee behind me I rebuke you in the name of Jesus because there's nothing you can do there's nothing you can do that's gonna sway me from the promises that the Lord has made 
So let your life glorify God. Let your life show men how I can up. This is how I'm standing. You say it's impossible, not when you're walking with Christ. Amen. In the name of Jesus, we can rebuke everything. Remember, God's going to take care of his own. So we have nothing to worry about. The question becomes, am I one of his? That's a personal question, though. You know, you can appear to be one way and be a whole nother way. But God knows. So shake off your heavy today. That's what the Lord wants me to tell you. There's nothing impossible that I can't do. It might look dark right now. Scripture tells us what? Weeping endured for a night. But what? But what? But what? Comes in the morning. So we must hold on to these things. We can't just stand around and say these things and quote these scriptures and don't walk in it. He told Peter, no, who, no one told you who I am but the Holy Ghost. So that's where we have to be now. Remember I said, when Christ comes and picks you up and cleans you up, he don't stay down there. He lifts you. He elevates you. He brings you up to his level. So now we have to operate in the realm that God is with us. We have to operate not in this fleshly realm anymore we still in the flesh but we can move but we 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 walk in the flesh but we in the spiritual now we up here now i just want to encourage you to shake it off you don't leave out of here depressed and down don't worry about it. whatever you're thinking about god's got it now if he told you he got it he's got to have it right the only thing I ever seen God not be able to do is tell a lie. All right, so if I promised you I'm going to deliver you, deliverance is at hand. Amen. Amen. So I just wanted to encourage you a little bit on today to let you know he conquered death. So why can't he deliver you out of this situation? You know, we don't know anybody that has come back from the dead. But Christ spoke the words and said, Lazarus, come forth. I got the power even over death. So don't let these little isms and schisms hold you back. Don't let what you're facing right now. This person on the job don't like you. This person over here is talking about you. Put them on the hands of Jesus. Rebuke them right now in the name of Jesus. Don't let them steal your joy. You have joy in the Lord. So keep that joy in the Lord. You know, don't give the devil the satisfaction. Don't give him the time. Don't even give him an audience. How about that? You don't even, you, you rebuke him as soon as you see him coming up. In the name of Jesus. Satan, I rebuke you right now. In the name of Jesus. Lord, be my hero. Come and take over this situation. Move in this house. Amen. We're going to be all right. Amen. We're going to be all right. We look at God and say, deliverance is at hand. Yeah. Kick it to the side and don't worry about it. There ain't no stumbling block that's going to keep you held back. Kick it out of your way. Amen. Yeah. We must understand, though, there's a way that we got to come. Let's, so let's be repentant. Let's make sure that we have a clean vessel for the Lord to dwell in. You know, so if you just need to have your burden left at the altar today, I'm going to ask you to come forward. And I'm going to ask you to just walk upright in the word of God and the confidence that you have in Jesus' name. Say, Lord, I'm ready to lay my burdens down. I'm ready to leave it at your feet. I'm ready for you to take over. I'm ready for you to be the, the driving force in my life. Be my hero. Deliver me on today. We thank you for everything that you've already done. Remember, your flesh wants you to feel weak. Because that's, that's what the devil can go after. But your... 